everything and thank you for joining me in my craft room today. Um, I had a subscriber to ask me if I would demo something for them. So before I start my project today, I am going to accommodate and anytime if you have a question, if you will either email me or if you will comment under the videos, if, if it's something that you really want to see done, if, you, if it's a project that you would like uh, to see or learn how to do or a technique, if you could email me at my email address, that would be a much easier way to make sure that I don't miss it because um, as busy as I am, I try my best to see all the comments, but as my channel's growing, it will get harder and harder to reply to each one of those and to read all of them. I do try my best, and anytime that I'm not busy creating or taking care of things around the house that I have to do, um, I do try my best to let y'all know that I did see your comment, even if it's just a like, a thumbs up, and if uh, need be, and I can, I will try to leave a comment. But one of my subscribers had asked, if I would show you how to use the uh, crop dolls She had recently bought one, and Margie, this is for you. She had recently purchased one and got it at a very good price, and she cannot figure out how to use it. So I'm going to cut off just um, several pieces of this scrap piece of white paper so that I can um, hopefully be able to show y'all how to use all uh, three of these um, as Margie calls them, chompers. They are called crocodiles, and the ones that I have, I have the, the the rounder, the corner rounder, which it does a half inch and a quarter inch. I also have the angler, which does a small angle and a large angle. And the one that Margie was interested in being shown is this one, which is the scallop and the stub. So I am going to start out with that one, and then I'm also going to address those two as well. But on the any of these um, crop dolls, they work the same way. You have your mechanism here at the top, and this is what does your, um, your, your work. But what you need to do is open this up, and make sure when you open it, that you're opening it all the way. Because sometimes you don't get a good chomp, is because you don't have it all the way open. So you want to make sure that it snaps down all the way open. And this little place up here, this is where it collects all of your little pieces. So when you do your chomping, uh, your pieces collect in there. So routinely you need to open that up, but to do your cutting you don't. You just leave it closed. And uh, in order to use this, whatever side, like if you have the scallops showing here, and in here, then that's the punch that you've got at this at this point. You turn it over, and this is the stub. So we're going to start out with the um, with the scallop. And when you put your paper in here, you want to make sure that it is butted against both this side and this side, and right in the middle. And hold your thumb there because if you don't, it will slip. And then you just mash it and that gives you that beautiful little scalloped edge. And this makes a really nice little decorative edge um, for any of your projects. Uh, I use this quite often because I do love this particular punch. And that is your scalloped edge. Now we're gonna turn it over, and now we're showing the stub. And I'm gonna grab another piece of this paper and we're gonna put it in the same way, making sure you're flush against both sides and holding it down with your thumb and this is your stub and again you want to make sure you got it in there hold it and punch get it down in there because see sometimes you just got it like this and it's not going to give you a good punch you've got to get it all the way in there and then and then press the handle very easy to do it gives a nice little um decorative edge on whatever you're doing. Now this is called the, the Scallop and Stub Cropodile and this is a We Are Memory Keepers product and I can get these in if anybody's interested in buying them. Email me and let me know and if you are I will carry these in my shop and I just don't have the overhead to be able to carry um, I guess high-end um, items. These are not cheap because they are very well constructed. This is a lifetime investment right here. 
and we are memory keepers are wonderful of standing behind their products so um, if for some reason it malfunctions um, you know they are very good to replace it uh, refund you whatever whatever you would like now this is the same per it works the same way you open it up all the way and this is your corner rounder this is a half inch and a quarter inch let's do the quarter inch and this gives you the little rounded corner again you're going to put it in there the same way you're going to get that corner down in there and this is what it gives you it gives you a nice little rounded corner all the way around this make a great tag if you wanted to use the let me i'll show you with this one this is the angle so say you want to do a tag out of this you could very easily put that in there and take off those little corners um, for this one I would probably go larger I would probably go with the larger um, with what is called the large angle uh, I think it looks better for a tag um, it gives you a much more angled cut at the top all you have to do is punch a hole and there are a couple options with your hole punches you have the um, the we are memory keepers um, crop a doll and and uh, brad setter and this will set a brad or it will just punch a hole so for this we're just going to punch a hole let's go with the smaller hole and it has an adjustment right here where you can adjust this to be the depth that you want it and then you can just hold it against there just like that punch your hole and then you've got a beautiful little tag with no trouble at all so that is um, using the that crocodile and this is the the whole punch and brad setter um, I'm going to do the larger the half inch on this piece and again half inch up half inch up and that will give you the larger round rounded corner which looks like that and you can see the difference in the two there's your small one versus your your larger one um, see if y'all can see those and then of course with your your angled punch that's the large one and we'll do the small one on this one so just so you can see the difference now once you um, once you do your your cuts there's the small one and this is the larger one this is a very slight angle this is a much better angle but that's what these um, these products do uh, if you get ready to empty out your um, your corner rounder or your scallop or your angle you can just dump these out like this and I usually will just take and, and bang it against my hand a few times like that and all of it usually comes out um, and you just have to clean those ever so often they don't have to be done every time you use them unless you are doing an awful lot of um, corner punching but that is one of the ways um, to use that and the same with this just always remember that before you start you have to wing, wing this out all the way and uh, and then whenever you need to clean these out just um, just hold them upside down just bang that against your hand a little bit and all your little debris will come out and you can do it over the trash can so you don't make that big of a mess and the same thing with this one they all work identical they um, you just you're able just to take those pieces out of there just that easy now most of the time I do I do this over my trash can so that I don't make a, a humongous mess on my on my work surface. But this is exactly the way those three um, crocodiles work, and these are not cheap. They are an investment. So if anyone is interested in me carrying any one of these three, or this one that does the uh, hole punch and the brad setter now that's not to be confused with the new one that just came out this is totally a hole punch now this one is in my shop and it goes from a 5 16 of an inch hole which is a very big hole all the way down to a 1 16 of a hole and you can see how tiny that one is
And normally for most tags, I think a 3 16 would be a good one. Um, this is so easy to punch. Um, I love the mechanism. It's it's just very easy to use and very, um, it's it's gentle on the hands. I guess that would be the right way to, to word that. Very, very gentle on the hands. Let me see if I can get my stuff back up here where I had it. Let's move that over. I'm going to leave this one here and I'm going to put these three up here. Like so. And we'll put this big one in the middle. And then we've got this one that needs to go back up here as well. And I just have these in a cardboard box um, that has some little slats in it. Um, something I ordered came in that box, and I don't even remember what it was now, but it turned out to be the perfect box for my my crop dolls so that's where I keep those. But um, Margie, that one's for you. I hope that helped you um, understand how to do this. And if not, um, get in touch with me. We can chit chat. Um, I can try to help you with it a little bit further. I will even go as far as if you need the help, I will do another video just on using that. Um, but I do want to move on right now to my project at hand. Um, I had made this quite some time ago, and what it is, it's like a little uh, folio, and I thought, how cute would it be to do one of these? Make this an address book. This is a place for your stamps. This is a place for your uh, return um, address labels, and it all folds up into a nice little neat um, magnet closed uh, folio. I keep this up on my desk and I have a little box up here that I keep my sticky tapes in and some embellishments and different things like that but all my tapes and everything and I keep this stuck to the side because anytime that I need to send a card I reach for this um, for my stamps and my, um, my um, return labels. So I did one, I did a, a trial run on this one and I thought these colors were just stunning together. You don't normally see pink with the uh, bronze, but I, I like that. I guess bronze or copper. Um, I didn't decorate it any further because what I was doing with this one is I was just trying to work out my measurements. I did put this on the back because I thought how cute would that be to have a decorative thing on the back that said happy mail because you know whenever we go into here we're usually sending some happy mail to somebody. So I thought that was really cute and I did pull out some more paper and I had some interruptions earlier so I had I deleted the video that I had started working on and on that one I had cut down my, my cardstock, but this right here is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And what I did is I cut my base, which is 12 by 6 and um, a half. So this is 12 this way and 6 and a half this way. So that is the base of your, uh, your folio. That is this part right here. And now your second piece is going to be the piece that wraps around right here and that piece needs to be three and a half by twelve and that's this piece here so three and a half by twelve so that gives you those two pieces and this piece right here we're going to hang on to because we're going to use it now for our mats and some of our decoration I thought how stunning is this going to be with this paper and I also want to go back in and find some dark blue because I think some dark blue on that is going to be gorgeous so we will get a piece of the midnight um, Bruce Monroe cardstock uh, to go in with that so let's put this right here and I got this piece of craft color. This was just a um, scrap that I had. And I'm going to use this for some, building some interior pieces. So just so, so you'll know that that's, that's where that's going. So let me gather up my other cardstock and a few more pieces I need. And then we'll get started on this project. Be right back. 
Okay, I'm back and I have pulled this piece of uh, Brutus Monroe Midnight, which is a deep navy. Um, and I just thought that this would look really pretty with this particular um, piece. I think it's a nice contrast. Uh, it does pull out some of the blues and the uh, deep lavenders and purples in that piece. So that was my reason for um, choosing that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and do our scoring on this piece. And we are going to put this in our scoreboard on the 12 inch side. And I am going to pull my pieces over here so we can, I can actually see what I'm doing. And I've got my notes over here so I can refer to them. Because once you work these uh, score marks out, it's hard to remember them all if you don't have a little cheat sheet or something. So I'm using my cheat sheet. My cheat sheet. So what we're going to do on this on this piece right here, we're going to score at two and one fourth. So right there. And we're going to score at two and a half, so just one quarter over. And then we're going to go down to six and one quarter, so six and a fourth. And hello. Hey, Mom. Hey. I'm sorry about the interruption. I had a phone call, and it was my my youngest daughter, her, her children are six. Of course, being the grandmother that I am, I needed to find out how my children or my babies are doing. So anyway, nobody has the flu, that's the good news. Um, getting back to what we were doing here, uh, I'm gonna go back over my score marks. I scored at two and one fourth, two and one half, six and one fourth, six and one half, and at 10. So these are your only score marks you need to make, and I'm going to show you how this comes together. This will fold up and glue on each side to make this little pocket here. This is going to fold up like this, and you're going to have some goodies that's going to hide away in there. And then this is going to come down, and this will give us this shape that we have, just like that. Um, we are going to round these corners here and do some other little goodies. But before we do anything else, let's go ahead and do our next piece. And I am going to lay that right there so that it's out of my way. And I am going to pull in this piece. And this is the three and a half by 12. And we're going to score this at um, two and a half. So two and one half. And this is a slick cardstock, so it's very easy when you're using a slick cardstock to slide off of it. So be careful when you're if you are working with something like that. So it's um, two and a half, two and three fourths, and then we're going to come down and do nine and a one fourth. So right there. and then nine and one half, giving us that little quarter inch gusset that we are gonna need. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fold this. I'm get a nice little crisp fold on it. Burnish, burnish it down. The same thing on that one. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna fold this down. like that. Okay, so now I think we can move our scoreboard out of our way because I think we're done with that for right now. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece up so that it gives us that little pocket area right there. And all we're going to do to do that is we're going to use a little bit of our glitter glue and we're just going to line this right down this edge right here. Just a thin line on both sides. And I'm just going to fold that up just like that. I 
I'm going to use my bone folder to kind of press that down. Like I said, this is some slick paper and it doesn't always want to adhere as good as your uh, cardstock that's, that's not slippery. So I'm just going to hold it, pressing it, making sure I get a good little stick right there. Now I want to take my, oh, that one's still not adhering. And if it continues to do that, I might have to come back and put some sticky tape in there, but we'll see. Don't worry about if you get glue on that shiny paper. We're going to cover this so it will be uh, concealed. So that's a good thing. All right. So now I'm going to get my corner rounder and I want to corner round these. But I'm not going to use the one that I showed y'all earlier in this video. I'm actually going to use, let me move my phone out of the way. I have these EK tools and I have a half inch and a one inch. I actually love this one inch and I don't have that one inch on the crop -a doll You have a half inch and you have a um, quarter of an inch. And I really want to do this on uh, the one inch. So I'm going to put that in there and if you notice I'm looking to make sure that that is centered right in the middle. And I'm just going to press that in and chop that off like that and that gives us our nice little rounded edge across the top and you can see it's starting to take shape but now we need to adhere this to the back of this um, and this is going to fit right in between those score lines and right here at the bottom what I want this to do is line up right here with the bottom of that score line so I'm going to push that one up so that when I set this in here, I can make sure that it is lined up very even with the bottom and with those inside score lines. Inside meaning the ones that are closest to the inside. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to run some glue right there and up there and down this way. And I'm just going to do it back and forth because I want this piece to seal down in here really, really well. So now I'm holding this with my folded edge up and I'm going to lay this into that glue just like this. And I am going to fold that back out and I'm going to use my bone folder. And I am just going to press this down because I really want to make sure this is glued well. Just like that. And that looks good. This is exactly what I wanted. And if you notice, our little quarter inch places all the way around is going to give us that nice little tight fit that we need. When we put this all together, we're going to have this very cute envelope shaped um, box. So isn't that cute the way that's coming together? Alright so at this point now we need to decide um, on this one I also rounded these points inside so I'm going to do the same thing with these because I think it gives it a very attractive look to have those rounded. So I'm going to open this up so I can get in here making sure that I get them nice and even just like that and then this one just like this trying to clean up my my mess as I go so I don't have so much to clean up after I finish all right so now we need to go ahead and do our mats. I and mean, we're going to need three mats. Let me put my pen back in my glue while we cut our mats. Um, I am going to cut three mats out of this um, beautiful butterfly paper. And I'm going to cut them this way. Um, I don't think it really matters because the butterflies are kind of going in all directions, but this looks like the correct orientation because the trees are going up this way. So we're going to cut it sideways like this, 
and I am going to cut these at three and one fourth. So I'm going to cut off at three and one fourth this way. And then we're going to put it in on J6 and one fourth this way. Now this is going to be one mat that is going to live like right here. Now I think what I'm going to do is I want to do the blue all here. I think that'll be very attractive. And we are going to do another one of these. So we're going to need three in total. So I'm going to cut another three and one fourth and we're going to cut this by six and a quarter and that one can go right there okay, so we have one for here and one for there and I think I'm going to do blue on this side but we do need another one right here so let's cut this one is going to be three and a half by, nope, that's not right. This is going to be one and three fourths by six. So one and three fourths. So we're going to cut a strip off one and three fourths. And that's going to be by six and one fourth. And this is going to be for this piece right here. I love these colors together. I think they're beautiful. And let's see, we're going to do a piece up here and a piece here. So I think I am going to do um, two inches. Let's do one here, two inches by six and a quarter. We know the width on this is going to, the mat's going to be six and a quarter because it was six and a half. So now we're going to cut this at six and one fourth. And that's going to go here. And then we're going to do a solid blue one that's going to live on the outside. So we are going to cut it. two inches by six and one quarter and that one's going to live right here on the top but we're going to need to angle cut so I'm going to use that same angle cut and I'm going to go in and not angle but corner rounder and we'll round that corner and around this corner. And this one will live right here. And then this one is going to live right there. So these corners need to come off. It's always good if you kind of pay attention to where your corners are going to be. So you don't take them off upside down. So I usually do a trial run by laying it down and then seeing if that's where I want it. And that's good. And that's good. And then this one here, that one there, and that one on the back. And then we're going to do the blue ones on the inside here. So we're going to need two at two by no, four of them. We're going to need four. So we're going to need two here and two here. So I'm going to do the blue here and the pattern here. So let's see. Two and one fourth by three and one fourth. Let's see, this is three and one fourth by two and one fourth. We have 
that's going to be one that can live here. And we need one more that's going to be two and one fourth. So that will be three and one fourth. Yep, that's perfect. So two and one fourth. And these are also going to get the corner rounder on the edge of them. But I'm just going to lay them down first. And now we're going to cut a piece off of this. And we're going to cut this at two and one fourth. By three and one fourth. And another one at three and one fourth. Okay, so we have all of our pieces cut, and we just need to do our. This one I don't think it's going to matter as long as it's the outside edge here and here. This one is going to be here and here. So that one goes there, that one goes there. And now we're going to do these two. And since they're solid, it doesn't matter as long as we're getting them on the right sides. So there we go. We got all of those done. I think all of our pieces are cut. And I'm going to put that away. I am going to rake all of my little pieces over here to the side and we'll get those all vacuumed up in a little bit. Now let's bring our full piece over and we are going to this one here and that one there. And we have a piece for that and a piece for this. Oops. Like so. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start gluing my pieces in. So this is going to be a relatively simple little process. Oh, this was one of my pieces. I'll tell you what, let's move them out and let's do one at a time. We're going to start with this one. So I'm just going to use Art Glitter Glue to put these on with. And kind of like a, little, a jigsaw puzzle to a degree. This is not a hard uh, little folio to make. Um, it's rather straightforward. Um, but I think this would make a a perfect gift for anybody that uh, has a desk, um, keeps up with retur their return labels, and um, maybe their stamps and an address book. This is just so cute. So I'm going to glue this one down right there. And we know that our mats really add so much to our project. So that's another reason that matting this with our different colors really does add so much, excuse me, add so much um, dimension and uh, personality. So we're going to just press that in there. And now we have one more that's going to go right here. I'm going to lay this out flat so that I can get that in there nice and even. lovely. Okay, so now we have this piece that is going to go right here. So 
just like that. And now we're going to do these pieces here. Yeah, I think I like, or do I want these here? You know, it really doesn't matter. It's just whatever your preference is. I think I'm going to put these on the inside and the other ones on the outside. Or would this be the inside? <laughs> I guess it's all your perspective, whether you would call this the inside or the out. But um, we're going to just stick this one down right about here. And then this one right here, like this. Oh, that's pretty. I love that. And now we're going to glue these right in here. And you can see it's just like um, it's piecing it together with these mats that makes it just so gorgeous. And uh, such a, um, you feel like after you finish putting something together like this and you're so proud of it, it's such a, a feeling of accomplishment. So I challenge you, um, even though this might sound daunting, if you follow my directions and if you cut your, go through and cut your pieces and then watch my instructions and put it together and you will be surprised how easy you will find this to come together and you might think oh i can't do that but you can you really really can okay now before i put down hmm should have done it before I put that piece down, but that's okay. We can still do our, we'll, we'll still do our magnet. Okay, I'm going to put this one right here. Some of the, so, some ways these colors look kind of fallish, but I also think of this being kind of wintery, and uh, it is still winter. We still have a long ways to go before we see the Robin Redbreast um, back in our neighborhood. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, since I forgot to put my magnet under here and under this one, we're going to show. I'm going to show you how, how to do this. If you do forget your magnet, because I did forget my magnet, we're going to. These are the little magnets that I use, and these are these are called spare parts, and. This was Paper Studio, and I got those regular $5.99, and I found them on sale for, um, I think this was spare parts. Maybe not. Hmm. I think I like the spare parts. No, I'm wrong. These are put out by, um, I'm not even sure. They're just called Magnet Discs, and they're very thin, um, very flat small magnets but they are absolutely wonderful and I will see if I can link those in the video so you you can pick some of these up if you want them because and and some of you may have magnets already so what I do is I like to let them catch together and these do have adhesive already on them which makes it really nice so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one right there in the center about there and then I'm going to close that onto itself and let it catch where it needs to go. Just like that. I'm going to press these in a little bit more. And let's go ahead and take the, the magnetic backing. I think I might need a little help with that. So I'm going to use this little stylus to help me <laughs> and it's attaching to it. So you're going to have to hold it down with your fingers 
and just pull up that backer and then we are going to go right in the middle right about there I wanted to put a little bit of glue underneath there, but I didn't do it. And it feels like it's holding really well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the backer off of this one. And I will remember to do just a just a dab. You just need a little dab, just like that, just a little extra. And I'm going to close this over, and it should come together right where we need that to stick. So I'm going to use my finger, and I'm just going to adhere that together really good right there. Look at those colors. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, so nice. Okay, you can leave it like this and let the magnets show, but if you want to cover them, let me show you how I go about covering up my magnets. I'll go in and take like a three-quarter inch um, scallop punch and I will just punch out a little piece. Let's see if we can get two off of here. Just like that. And then I will glue these down on top of here. And then that way your magnet is covered and you have a very nice decorative piece and your magnet is all hid away underneath. Just like that. So we're going to do the same thing here. And just lay that down on top of it. Now I am going to look over into my flowers and I'm sure that I have some something pretty that would go on here. These are really pretty and they have that rustic look. I think these would be gorgeous to put in there. And I think I got these at, um, these are called burlap roses. And I did get these at Tuesday morning. I'm debating on whether, yes, I want that one. Oh, that's so cute there. Is that not a pretty piece? And all we have to do for this is just put some glue on it. Now I'm going to put a good amount of glue because I know it's going to go into that fabric. Just like that. And then I'm going to sit the flower right there in the middle. And just hold it. The good thing about art glitter glue is it adheres really quickly. Which is one of the good things about it. It does adhere very quickly. Isn't that a beautiful piece? I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And, and like I said, you know, there's so many different ways you can do that. Because this one I just cut a scallop with a circle and put that on. Just like that. I did put my batter in my my battery. I call those batteries, I think, because they look like a battery. But my magnet under there, and uh, that one closes really well. Nice little uh, folio. Um, and I have this on the back. Now, I need to decide what do I want to put on the back of this one. What do I want to put on the back? Now, I am going to leave that like that just for a minute. 
because I'm thinking that I want to decorate the back of this one. I thought I had cut another piece. Did I not do three of those? I'm pretty sure I did. I just wonder where it went. I know I had a piece that dropped off a while ago. And I picked it up. Let's see. Is this it? This one's a little bit small, but I think we can make that work. You know what we might do? We might just frame it in a little bit of blue. Yep, because I'm not seeing the piece that I thought I had. Um, I do want to cut and probably do a heat embossing. Or maybe... Hmm. I'll tell you what, let's cut this piece and make this the full three and a half by six and a half. So let's go ahead and cut this down after I put my pen back in my glue so we don't have a clump and a mess. And we still have to build the inside. So we I might wait and do that a little bit later. But let's go ahead and cut this down. This was three and a half. Is that what we said it was? Three and a half by six and a half. So let's go three and a half right here. Six and a half. I'm going to open that up so that it's the flower's not in our way. And we're going to put that right there. Maybe trim it down just a hair more. I want a little bit of that ones to stick out. So I'm going to take it down about a quarter of an inch. And maybe a quarter of an inch. And this should give us a nice little edging just like that. That's exactly what I was looking for. So we'll go ahead and glue this one down. And I think we just need to take it down about a quarter of an inch across the top. And again, this is what I call customizing your piece. And anytime that you're crafting, you know, get your ideas from um, YouTube or Pinterest or whatever. And then when you come to actually put your piece together, make it yours. Just make it yours by um, adding in your mats at different sizes, um, a die cut here or there, a flower. You know, you may even want to stamp some images and fussy cut them, color them, and then fussy cut them and put those on it. And there's no wrong, there's no wrong way of doing this. And look at that. Is that not the most adorable? Now the only thing we've got left to do is to build up our pieces for in here. And for our pocket and our band, we need a band here and a pocket here. And I think I'm going to do this with the blue. 
we need it three and a half by three. So let's see if we've got three this way. Almost. We'll see. Three and a half? No, not quite three and a half. So let's go three. And we'll cut this piece off. About three and a half. So we are going to score this three and a half by three. Let me look at this and see exactly how we did it. So we're going to do a half an inch scoring on this. So we're going to score half an inch all the way around. So we're going to do a half an inch on um, each side. So that's going to be a half and three. And we're going to turn it. And that's three inches, so at two and a half, we're going to score this down. And this is going to give us our cute little angled piece. And what we're going to do, we're going to miter those corners so that we have a nice little fit there. And I'm just going to take my cutter bees, and I'm going to go in right about here and cut that out like that and cut this one out like that and this will just give us a nice little miter edge right there so we can glue this in now i want to cut these off just a little bit more because what i want is i want that to fold up in there without any lap over so maybe we need to cut this one just a little bit more. Yep, that's good. Just like that. Now that's going to make us a cute little pocket that's going to live right here. The perfect place to put our stamps. Now I wonder if we could stamp something cute on there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this in white. And maybe this craft color would be a cute color. Let's stamp that right there. stamp block and I'm going to grab out my Bristol Mark ink So cute. And this is from um, Tracy and Bill Stamps for Mindless Crafting. And this one is called Happy Mail, I think. Yep, Happy Mail. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can find a circle punch or maybe a scallop punch. That one's a little bit too big. Where's my three-quarter? Let's see if that one... Nope, we need something a little bit bigger than three-quarter. Let's see if we 
one inch. I don't have the scallop in the one inch, but I do have the circle. So let's see if that will work. Oh, and that looks perfect. Look at that. Fits up in there like it was made for it. So I punch that out. And I think I might pop that up on a pop dot. I think that'll look cute right there. Perfect place for stamps since that looks like a stamp. So let's get a little piece of foam tape. Turn it over and just stick this down. And pull up our backer. And then we're going to put this like right in the middle, right about there. And then we're going to go ahead and adhere this inside of our little folio, right about here, just like that. So I am going to put glue on all three sides of these little tabs. And this will be perfect for holding a book of stamps. And that way you always know where your stamps are when you get ready to send out your happy mail. And there we go. Now I am going to take my bone folder and I am going to just press this down to make sure we get a good, a good stick. And we've got a nice little pocket right there for our stamps. It looks like a little nail emblem. Oops, I knew that was going to come up. I don't know why I knew that, but I just knew that it was. Okay, we're going to stick that down again. I'm, this time I'm going to grab a couple of clothespins. I keep these in my little drawer over here just for things like this. When I have a stubborn place that doesn't want to adhere for me, I'll just throw a couple of those on it and it gives me extra fingers while I'm doing something else. Always a good rule of thumb. So I'm going to put these little things away and the next thing I want to work on is a little address book. Now that is going to be what's going to take a little bit longer time to put together, but um, I want to make an address book. You could use a set of sticky notes um, and make a little um, cover for it like I did this one, but I would love for it to be a address book. And see, I covered this one and it these are sticky notes and I made it where it would fit down in here like so. And we could do that. We could we could cover and put um, a little cover over it. This is a great thing for just like if you need a sticky note, you need to transfer an address from one place to the other. And we can we can definitely do something similar to that. Um, trying to decide if that's what I want to do or if I want to do something a little bit different, but I'm thinking I definitely want to do something with the blue. So um, I'm going to go back and look at this piece. And we're going to need a strip that is about one and a quarter, one and a quarter by four inches. So one and a quarter by four. by four. 
and we're going to score it at a half an inch on each side. So I'm just going to I'm going to do this right here because we can. And I don't want to pull up the scoreboard and I've just got a teeny place to do. I'll do it like that. Now nobody's going to see this because our little booklet is going to live behind it. So we are going to put this down right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on it. Here, and I'm not even let me pull it over here so you can see what I'm doing I'm putting this right down beside this and I'm putting it right here because I want that sticky note just to drop down in there okay let's see if we got this to stick that looks pretty good might leave, a, leave one on it just for a little bit longer. Maybe both of them. That's very good. Alrighty. So now I need to come up with something that will cover a sticky note pad. And let's see, I think I have some I have some full sticky pads somewhere. Let me grab them and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, we're back and what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and build um, a holder for a set of sticky notes. Now, if you find a different type of little notepad that you can slide into this uh, slot, by all means, uh, do that. But for a temporary um, fix, we are going to use this um, uh, pad of sticky notes. And I think these were the cheap ones. I think I might have picked these up at the um, at Dollar Tree or something. I'm not even sure. But what we're going to do, we're going to build a base. And in order to do that, we need a piece of paper that is, um, let's see, three and, we need it to be three inches by six and a quarter. So we're going to take a three inch, oh, that was four, goodness, I don't think I have my head on straight right now. <laughs> do y'all ever feel that way especially when you're measuring I know sometimes I do and I'm thinking oh why did I cut that there but I think we all do that so um, it's nothing to um, to make a mistake you know you just regroup you come back out and you cut again and you know what this little strip will come in handy for something else so no big deal alright we need to cut this nail at six and a quarter so let's go to right there and then we need to score this in two places we are going to score it at three inches so i'm going to put it in right there and i'm going to score Two, three, this wrong or something. Let's see. Mm. 
I did. I cut that too short. Let's see. I picked up the wrong piece. I'm telling you, I don't think my head is screwed on straight this morning. No, nope, because that's not six and a quarter either. Okay, let's regroup. Let's try this again. Um, it is actually another day because I finished working on the building of this in yesterday's video and I had to leave it because I had to go get um, some dinner made and everything. So, um, I'm coming back early this morning to see if I can finish this up so I can get it, um, get it off for everyone, get it uploaded and uh, deliver it. So, <laughs> okay, so we have this at three and let's try this again. Let's do six and a quarter. I don't know what I did a while ago. I must have done five and a quarter. Six and a quarter. Yep, this looks more like it. I'm just going to score it right here in my trimmer. I do this sometimes when uh, I don't need to do a whole lot of scoring. So I'm going to use this little stylus. And I'm going to score it at three. Oops. And then we're going to go to three and a quarter. We're going to score it again. Now that looks more like what I was aiming for. So we're just going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to crease this down. get my fold to bend. It did not want to cooperate, but we know we can train paper. A good bone folder and you can definitely train your paper. Okay, so now we have this little piece. This is going to live inside and this gives you a nice little cover now for your sticky notes. Um, we are going to build a piece on the back and that piece needs to be three and a half by two. And I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of this to make that out of. So let's move this over. And it needs to be three and a half. By two. And we're going to score at one. So I'm going to do that in here too. So just for the sake of not having to bring the scoreboard back up. So I scored that at one, and this is going to give us a nice little piece that will slide down into our little pocket. So let's give it a trial, a trial before we actually put the sticky notes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom of this piece, just like this. This is going to be our back. So I want that to live right at the very bottom. So I am going to put some glue right here. I think I need some more glue in my bottle. It doesn't seem like it's, um, when they get low, they sometimes seem like they don't come out as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up at the bottom and then I'm just going to lay it down. And I do want to get it as even as I can. Just like that. And then I'm just going to press it on. I'm just going to hold it with my fingers and try my best to get that to adhere right there really well. Oops. Got a little bit crooked. It's okay. The good thing about art glitter glue, it does give you a tiny bit of wiggle room there. So you do have the opportunity to move it if you see you uh, didn't place it quite right. But you have to hurry because we all know that it will adhere. Alright, let's do a trial run on this before we put our sticky notes in or before we decorate this. And then that's going to go in and live right like that. And that is falling perfectly exactly where I wanted it. Okay, so we know this is working. So now what I need to do 
besides putting my pen back in my glue, <laughs> I need to um, go ahead and decorate the front of this. And I thought what would be really cute on here, um, let's see if we have any of the blue left. I've got all my little scraps over here. And I don't know. I wanted a little decorative piece on here, but I'm not sure that I'm going to get it because, well, we can always go into our scraps and see what we have. I don't have scraps over here that are big enough to accommodate. Oh, maybe this will work. That would be cute. Sorry, I had to get a drink of water because, for whatever reason, my throat feels really dry. I'm going to cut this down to three. Again, this is your own creativity. Do you. So, I just want this little piece to be... Now, this is... So I'm going to take it to three quarters. That should give me half. Almost. It's not going to matter because it's going to look behind it. So what I'm, what I'm thinking of doing here is put a strip here and one here. Just letting that poke out on each side. And then have this piece I think I like that I really wanted something on here that was a little more decorative let me let me put y'all on hold just for a minute and I am going to grab a die because I'm still thinking I want a die cut on this so I'll be right back Alrighty, I am back and I did find what I was looking for. I went into my scraps and I found a piece of the blue, the same color that I'm using. So what I want to do is I want to cut two dies. I'm going to use this, um, this die. I think it's called um, Loopy Lace and it is a Gina Marie die. And I'm just going to bring that down to here. I'm not even going to uh, bring over the, cut, the die cut machine because you'll see me cut um, dies many, many times and I just did a a uh, um, second look at this revolution that I'm carrying in my store and y'all know I love it and that's exactly what I'm using to cut this out so, and then I'm also going to cut that butterfly out of that, um, that other paper because I think it's gorgeous all right there's my die or my circle isn't this so cute I'm going to pop out all my little pieces make sure that everything's showing really pretty. Just like this. You just have to go through and make sure that you've got all of your little pieces out because this is what makes your um, your, dot, your cut pieces look so nice. So I'm going to use this pattern piece that has butterflies on it to actually cut this butterfly. Not sure how, what it's going to look like, but we're going to give this a try. I think it's going to be pretty. For me, this is the fun part of doing crafting. It's trying different things and see if this looks good, if that looks good. And y'all know that a lot of times I bring you along for the ride. Um, because I don't always know. I don't have everything laid out and planned out. And, as y'all know, I've changed my mind. <laughs> do y'all ever do that? Now look at that. Is that not the cutest little butterfly? So I'm going to just poke all of the little pieces out. Making sure that I get all of the little debris out of it so that we have a good 
look for this butterfly. I love it with that color. You know, I, you know, I just thought, I got that little piece and I wonder what it would look like. And I think I like it. Y'all all know how much I love butterflies. And a shout out to precious, precious Jerry Reed. Um, Jerry sent me the sweetest card and a pack of wooden butterflies. I thought about using one of those on here, but I wanted I didn't want to put any more bulk in, in the middle of this. And I was afraid that that might be just a, a hair too bulky. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dab my glue. We have a very stormy and rainy day here today. Oh, I see I still have a couple little pieces that did not get poked out. And when I turned that over on the back, I was able to see it. All right, let's see. I think we got it all now. Yeah, that looks really good. So I'm going to scoot over all of my stuff. Now, I, you know, I told y'all once before, if you're doing little die cuts like this, just dot your glue. Don't try to run um, a circle of glue around these little places. Just put some little dots here and there. And it will work and it will adhere. But dotting it on is much better than trying to um, run a line of glue up and down. So I'm going to sit this butterfly right in here. Just like that. And then I'm going to glue the whole thing to the front cover. And then we're going to glue in our sticky notes. And guess what? We will be done. So I'm going to put this right in the middle. Just like that. And now I want to take some glue and I want to run glue all back here on this piece. Just like that. And then I'm going to lay my sticky notes, this back cover, right down into this. Do, and I did get a little glue right there, but it's dry. I didn't want to lay, lay my um, my little folio into the glue and get glue on the back of it. So, I'm trying to be a little careful. Put my pen back in my glue because I know when I don't, I'm hearing y'all screaming out there. Put your pen in your glue. <laughs> All right, and that fits perfect right there. What a cute little project. Uh, this would make a wonderful gift. I think anybody would be thrilled to get something like this. And yeah, that does fit down in there very well. So it does move just a little bit, but it also is so that you know if someone needs to take it out, they can. And I love the way that is um, fitting. You know, if, if you wanted to, you could glue that in. You could put a little glue back here. And as you set, set it in, um, you could position it so it doesn't move. Let's do that. I think that would make it really cute. I'm going to take a little bit of glue. And I'm just going to put it on this piece right here. Right at the bottom. Now the thing's going to be to get it through there without getting glue all over everything. So very, very carefully just slide it in. Position it where you want it to live and then just press it down. And there, we have it completely done. Um, 
such a cute little piece. Um, I think people would use this. You got a place down here, and in mine, I keep my return addresses. Let's see, what did I do with it? Show you exactly how I do mine. And I did take this one out uh, earlier. But these are some old stamps, but I'll just show you um, how I would do it. This is a pocket that will definitely hold your stamps. And I put my return addresses right in here. And the number of mail pocket is always ready whenever I need to use it. I've got, I've got my stamps right here. And this will hold a regular book of stamps. You just have to slide it in. But there is my portfolio completely done. Um, with my stamps, my return labels, and everything uh, in here. So I, I hope y'all enjoyed the process of making this. I'm going to stick mine back into my um, my holder. Uh, this was so much fun to do, and I think it's a, a neat little project to have, to give, and uh, I hope y'all enjoy it. So if you enjoyed making this, uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And also, if you make this, please go over and subs um, uh, sign up for our Facebook group, Random Acts of Crafting by Kathy Jenkins. Okay, I am back. I do apologize so much. That was my husband. He calls me every morning on his uh, morning break. And... <laughs> It seems like I am forever on the phone. I mean, always on the camera when someone calls me. I do apologize for the interruption. But nevertheless, we have this done. And as I was saying, if you do this, I would love to see it. So go to um, uh, my Facebook page or our Facebook page. And it is uh, just go to Facebook and in the search, type in Random Acts of Crafting by Kathy Champion. And you will see the web page. I mean, the Facebook page and just request to join if you have not already. So if you make one of these, like I said, you know I'm going to want to see it. So um, please uh, feel free to post any of your projects there. I'm going to lay these out and show you this is the same thing with three different looks. This is the one that we made. This is my old one, the very first one that I made. And this one was one that I was just working through to get all of my measurements straight uh, to bring to y'all. So it, uh, different looks, depending on how you decorate it, you can make it very elegant or you can make it fun. It's just totally up to you on how you uh, do this. But if you are watching this and you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Um, I am only about 29 or 30 people away from my 500 subscribers, and I do have a giveaway. So if you have not entered the giveaway, there is a video. So if you go to, if you look at the tabs across the top and go to the one that says videos and scroll down until you find the one that says let's talk. If you'll watch that, it's a very short video. It will, it will explain how to enter the contest and it will show you the prize package that of uh, what one lucky winner will receive. So please do that. Uh, you have to subscribe. You have to leave me a comment uh, on, under that video in order to um, be eligible for the, the the giveaway. So I just thought I would put that out there. We're getting close. Um, I will do a video later this week. It might even be Saturday, but I have new products that are coming in. I got a shipment in yesterday. I'm getting another one tomorrow and another shipment is due on Friday. So once I get this all put in my store, I'm going to come to you in a video and I'm going to announce the, the uh, sort of like a reopening of the store. All the new products will be in, and I can't wait. I'm so excited. So anyway, I love you all very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing, for being so supportive, and most of all for your love. And as I always say in closing, be kind to someone. Um, show love and patience. That's so important. And uh, I just pray for each and every one of you, and in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. And until we craft again, God bless you all, and bye-bye.